All right, so thank you for the introduction. So as already mentioned, my name is Olga Cha, and today I'm presenting the results of my master's thesis project. So for my master's thesis, I examined whether the timing of release of brown trout smolts affects their survival as well as migration timing in the Roskilde Fjord in Denmark. So first to give some background on my study species, the brown trout. Uh, so they can be found in Europe, North Africa, and Western Asia. However, they have been introduced in many countries worldwide as a valuable sports fish. The brown trout have a predominantly anadromous life cycle, which means that the adults can be in a marine environment, um, but then they can migrate to fresh waters, such as rivers, lakes, and streams to spawn. Uh, then the young brown trout, after growing for one to five years, can then migrate out into the coastal environment. When the brown trout are making this transition from freshwater to saltwater, they undergo several physiological changes uh, to prepare them for life at sea. So this process is called smoltification, and the brown trout during this phase are called smolts. Um, and this is the life stage that we studied in the study. Um, so unfortunately, uh, wild brown trout populations have been declining across Europe over the past couple of decades. Uh, this has been caused due to many things such as pollution, habitat destruction, as well as artificial river barriers so uh, that block migratory passage such as dams. So some ways that have been used to try to improve the brown trout population have been to do habitat restoration programs as well as to do fish stocking. So um, for fish stocking projects, uh, and brown trout are raised in hatcheries. Um, and then released into the wild to either reintroduce extirpated populations or supplement existing but declining uh, uh, wild populations. One such stocking program occur, uh, exists in the Roskilde Fjord in Denmark. So here, uh, local angling and fisheries unions and associations work with the Danish government to raise and release brown trout as well as restore brown trout habitat so in the fall, uh, when adult brown trout come to freshwater to spawn, the adults are harvested and their eggs and sperm are collected. The eggs are fertilized and then the resulting brown trout are raised in hatcheries uh, where they grow and then are subsequently released back into local waters. Now, unfortunately, several studies have uh, noticed that stocked fish have much lower survival than their wild counterparts. Uh, with most of this mortality occurring within the first few hours to days after they are released. And some possible causes for the slower survival are the, um, are the stress uh, caused to the fish during the handling, transportation, and release. Uh, the hatchery reared fish may have poorly developed foraging or anti-predator behavior due to being raised in a protected hatchery environment. Also, the high initial concentrations um, of the brown trout when they are released may provide a highly attractive target for predators. Therefore, uh, for this thesis project, we examined if releasing brown trout at night might improve their initial survival. So fish are typically stocked during the day. However, it was thought that perhaps releasing them at night uh, may provide them with a few hours um, of darkness where they are protected from visual predators such as cormorants and pike uh, after they are released. And we also uh, examined whether releasing brown trout at night may alter their migration timing or patterns. And to do this, we use acoustic telemetry. So um, I guess you've already heard about it in previous presentations, but just to give an overview about how it works. So an acoustic transmitter tag is implanted into a study individual and this tag emits pulses of sound. Um, when this tagged individual enters the detection range of an acoustic receiver, otherwise commonly called a hydrophone, uh, the unique identifying information about that individual is recorded, as well as the date and time that detection occurred. So the distance at which a tagged individual can be detected depends on many uh, factors such as environmental parameters. Uh, for instance, a noisy environment would have a much shorter detection range than a quieter one. So now to take you through the six main steps of the study. Uh, so first, as already mentioned, uh, brown trout are raised by local angling and fisheries associations 
When the brown trout reach approximately 15 centimeters in length, they start undergoing this multiplication process, so this transition from freshwater to saltwater, uh, these changes. Uh, then to study the species, uh, we deployed acoustic receivers in the study area. I have a picture of this on the following slide to give you a better sense of the study area. And then a small selection of brown trout smolts are implanted with these acoustic transmitter tags. So 60 fish were tagged in 2019 and 111 fish were tagged in 2020. The brown trout smolts were then released. So every year of the study, 12,000 untagged individuals would be released. And amongst these untagged individuals, the tagged individuals would be released. And the tagged individuals would be released in such a manner that an equal number would be released during the day or at night. So the day release group would be released during the day at approximately 8.30 a.m and the night release group will be released at night at approximately 9 p.m. And the acoustic receivers were serviced approximately every month to download data as well as remove biofouling, which may affect detection. And the final step was to do the statistical analysis. So this was done using R. Uh, brown trout survival was modeled with a generalized linear model with a Bernoulli distribution and migration timing was compared between the two release groups, so the day release and night release, uh, using the Roger Watson Wheeler test. So this is the study area, the Roskilde Fjord. Uh, so as you can see, the red star, that's the release site. Upstream of the release site was K0, so an acoustic array that was only deployed in 2019. It was deployed upstream of the release site um, behind a fish ladder to see if any brown trout were migrating upstream instead of downstream. Um, and then in the more inner part of the Roskilde Fjord is Katinga Bay. So this is where the K1 to K5 arrays are located. And then in the lower Roskilde Fjord are the R arrays, so R1, R1B, R2, and R3. So if a brown trout smolt were to migrate from the release site to the ocean, it would follow such a migration route out into the Kattegat Sea. Now, since the study only looked at initial survival, a fish would be considered a survivor if it reached the end of Katinga Bay. So if it was detected on K5, or if it was detected on any of the acoustic arrays in the lower Roskilde Fjord. So any of the R arrays, so R1 to R3. So after releasing the fish and gathering data for several months, it was time to then analyze uh, the data. So here I selected individual detection plots for three uh, selected fish to give you a better sense of how this data would look like. So fish number one, uh, you can see it was detected at K1 all the way to K3, so here. Uh, however, then it stopped being detected um, therefore, and since it's never reached K5, it was considered dead or a not successful migrant for modeling purposes. Fish number two uh, was detected at K1, and it was detected to the end of Katinga Bay, so K5. So it was not detected in the lower Roskilde Fjord, so with the R arrays, but since it still reached the end of the bay, it was considered a survivor. And then fish number three, it was detected from K1 to K5, the end of Katinga Bay, and it was detected in the lower Roskilde Fjord all the way to the last receiver. So uh, it was also considered a survivor. Now, before um, uh, talking about uh, our, the survival analysis, we have to take array efficiency into account. So the way array efficiency works is that you compare the fish that were detected at a given array with the fish that were detected downstream of it. So when array efficiency is less than 100%, it means that a certain number of fish uh, skip detection or pass by an array without being detected by it um, that should have been detected because they were detected downstream. So, um, and it should be noted that it's impossible to calculate array efficiency for R3, the last array, because it is the last array that we deployed, so there are no further uh, arrays downstream of it to compare to. Also, it should be noted that array efficiency was a bit lower in uh, 2020 
uh, compared to 2019 for the success race. So uh, we had to take this into account when doing our statistical analysis of survival. So um, after analyzing the data, we found that only 49 out of the 171 tagged brown trout smolts migrated successfully out of Kitinga Bay. And this was very evenly split between the day release and night release groups. So unsurprisingly, uh, brown trout survival was not affected by release groups, and it was also not affected by any of the other variables we studied in, in, our, in our model. So it was not affected by release year 2019 or 2020 or by fish length. And as I mentioned, due to the lower array efficiency for the 2020 data, uh, we had to take that into account. Uh, so we did this by maximizing the differences in survival between the day release and night release groups. So the way we did this was we added the maximum number of potentially undetected fish survivors to the day release group to maximize the difference between the day release and night release survivors. And um, however, when we ran the model, uh, even in this worst case scenario, there continued to be no significant difference between the day release and night release groups. So uh, while few studies have examined the uh, timing of the impact of timing of a release on stock hatchery reared fish uh, and to, when they're released into the wild, the few studies that do exist found that uh, there was no significant difference between releasing fish during the day or at night. Some possible explanations for this a lack of difference are that the eight to nine hours of darkness that the night release group experiences uh, was insufficient time for those fish to uh, recover from stress before being exposed to visual predators that become active during the day. Another possible explanation is that uh, hatchery root fish have poor anti-predator and foraging behavior, so releasing those fish at night won't make up for those behavioral deficiencies, so you're merely slightly delaying their inevitable deaths. Um, then to answer the other research question we looked at, so we looked at um, to see if uh, the timing of release affects uh, brown trout smolt migration timing. So we did this by comparing brown trout smolt arrival times at the different acoustic arrays in Katinga Bay. So overall, we found that there was no significant difference in arrival times between the day release and night release groups, with the exception of K1. At K1, the day release group was first detected during the day and the night release group was first detected at night. However, uh, you have to be very cautious about interpreting this because uh, K1 is located only 75 meters away from the release site. Um, and at the following array, uh, K2, uh, which was around 550 meters away, there was no significant difference in arrival times. So overall, brown trout smolts, uh, the tagged brown trout smolts had a nocturnal migration pattern with their arrival times at the arrays occurring between 1 and 4 a.m. Uh, this nocturnal migration pattern is consistent with the natural brown trout smolt migration pattern. Uh, wild brown trout tend to migrate at night, uh, especially at the start of the migratory season. It is thought to avoid uh, visual predators. Therefore, um, this study does not support the more logistically complicated nighttime release of brown trout smolts, as we found that there was no significant, as timing of release had no significant impact on brown trout survival or on their migration timing. Therefore, future research should instead focus on finding other ways to improve stocked hatchery reared fish survival. Um, for instance, holding brown trout smolts at staging pens at their release site for several days prior to their release uh, to allow them time to acclimate and recover from stress while being protected from visual predators. I'd like to take a moment to thank you all for listening to my presentation, as well as thanking all the people and organizations who are involved uh, with this project. Uh, without your help, uh, this thesis would not have been possible, so thank you. These are my references. Thank you.